All right, and I think we're live. Here we go. Let's do this. We're gonna go live on. Um, Facebook. Man, that took a while. <laughs> we're going live on Facebook. All right. Let's do a close up. Here we go. So I have a. I have a canvas here that I want to I want to use for this. But I think it would be would be pretty nice if I do it this way. Just kind of on the. There we go. Okay, so this canvas measures uh, 10 by 20 inches. 20 inches across. I think I need a new brush, a new small brush. Let's see, I've got one right here. All right. I need a new one. So I'm gonna paint a little bird on a I'm going to paint a little bird on a uh, branch and I'm going to start it like this. Very simple. Little legs right there. Little feet I guess. Look at that. Super simple. Almost almost minimalism. Very, very simple. Okay. So since this little bird is gonna be right here, what I wanna do over here is play around a little bit with the idea of some a little bit of floral. And and the reason for it is just to kind of balance it out. It's a visual balance or visual weight, also referred to as, as visual weight or balance. If I would have painted this little bird over here, it would have been uh, kind of like a no-no when it comes to painting because the little bird is, is looking that way so it's automatically gonna make you wonder what is he looking at and it's gonna make you look that way out of the painting. And so that's a little something in composition for those of you who, who are artists to keep in mind. Uh, make sure that whatever whatever you're painting your your image is facing into the canvas to keep the viewer in the canvas many times uh, paintings are super beautiful the way that they're they're created um, whether it's a portrait or anything and artists don't realize that artists uh, don't realize that they're even though the, their paintings are beautiful, they're inviting the viewer to not watch it, to not watch the painting, to watch something else. Without meaning to, of course. I just love creating these paintings. There's so much, there's so much in them. There's so much that you can do in a painting. It's just amazing. It never ends. It just keeps going, and it's just up to the artist to realize what what they want to do if they want to if they want to continue with a painting. Or maybe stop it at any given point and call it a day. But it allows for so much. How's it going, Van? Good to see you here. So 
So someone has had a couple of people have asked me why do I do this these videos at random hours? Why don't I set a, a time? And I I might just start doing that. I might just start doing these videos at a, at a specific time. I usually just just do them whenever I get a chance. So we might we might just commit to a time, a specific time, and 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 uh, maybe do them daily. Maybe maybe switch them out and do different types of videos. Who knows? We're we're gonna. I also want to hear your feed your feedback, and if that's something that you guys are interested in. So I'm gonna do a little bit of florals right here. Just to kind of invite the viewer to, to keep their eyes on the painting. And get to savor it a little bit longer. Something like that, not too much. Oh, thank you so much, Mary. How's it going? How's it going, Didi? Didi says I love watching. Always love watching uh, you work. I'm eating lunch at home. <laughs> My city is next door. No, <laughs> nice. something like this what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this uh, bigger brush that I got over here and just kind of brush 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 and not suggest a, a a blue background this time around because I think uh, it can be overplayed especially when you're using very bright colors so I'm rather using a very light almost like a sea foam uh, olive between a sea foam and an olive green very very light And this is just to cover. It's, I'm, I'm just blocking at this point. I'm not really. It's just to cover space. There we go. Which is something that I like to do. I like to do the backgrounds at the end, not not first, so that I'm able to edit whatever I painted, where the subject matter is. I can always edit it when I do the backgrounds at the end. So here we go. Let's mix a little bit more of that. I'm going with a, with a wider brush and just kind of going there. And cutting in. This is called negative painting or, or cutting. Referred to as cutting or negative painting when you're doing the background at the end. You see I'm able to play around with the, with the subject with the little flowers right here. I'm able to eat into it, if you, if you will.
very gently just kind of go around it see greetings from Austria oh thank you did he says I love birds we don't have a lot of animals in Hawaii but we have birds beautiful thanks always learning things from you thank you so much how's it going how's it going Spence So something like this. Look at that. And painting is another little form of meditation or, or for some people, uh, depending on their, on their beliefs, it's, it might be a form of prayer also. It relaxes the mind. Especially when you do it in a way where you're not you're not expecting much from it. You're just kind of you let your mind rest a little bit and you don't expect much from it. You you just kind of paint the way and, and don't get bothered by anything about it. If it came if it if it came out the way that you were expecting or this is why I say don't, don't expect so much from it so that you can really enjoy it look at that you really get to enjoy it that way Isn't that beautiful? Oh, thank you so much. Donis, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Spence uh, says, which has been getting them uh, fires up here. Oh my God, yeah. That's awesome to see some dope art. Thank you. Yeah, my, my 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 heart goes out to all the people that are, are, are going through that right now. In in um, in Arizona, we in Tucson spe specifically, we, we had some fires here in the in the Catalinas mountains, close here to the city. Not not so close, but close enough. And devastating. I hope you all stay well. Oh, thank you so much, Victoria. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely very very zen. It's a little zen practice for me. Oh, thank you so much, Sandra. Ross says, uh, very nice work, Jose. I can't say that enough. <laughs> I did get signed up for your classes today. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much, Ross. I appreciate that. We're going to be uploading new videos. Um, I'm going to be doing this weekly. And we're going to get to a point where we're doing them monthly. But I'm going to upload many, many, many videos. In the next coming weeks. So it's going to be very fun. Something like that. Very simple. Uh, Jahuara says, yes, painting and also drawing are very much a prayer. Absolutely in meditation. I often feel one with whatever I'm doing beautifully. Often uh, when I'm done, I think, who did that? I really enjoy watching. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very beautiful way to put it. No, oh, thank you, Didi. That's a really beautiful way to put it, um, because because you 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 lose yourself and you step out of time, you know. To put it in uh, in uh, in those words, you step out of time 
uh, out of the notion of time, and you lose yourself, your 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 outer identity. No, your your I'm a I'm a father. I'm a son, uh, you, and you also lose your problems. You lose your problems also, because you, you, you're not you're not thinking about them. Every time you're not thinking about your problems, you're losing them. And so at the end of the painting, you, you ask yourself, man, who did that? It's almost like it, it came to be in existence on its own, because there wasn't much thinking. So I think I'm going to sign it over here. And maybe a couple of little highlights, just a couple, not all over the, 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 the flowers, but a couple of little highlights. Just like that. There we go. Just a couple. Just to kind of play with the idea of a little light is hitting them. Extraordinary light. Uh, you can wait when the painting dries. Uh, you can do the finishings too. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I personally like to paint. I like to do my oils. Um, right at right at that moment. Uh, wet on wet, right? Wet on wet. But yeah, you can definitely wait for it to dry and and then move on. Let's see, let's do a landscape. I'm gonna do a landscape now for those of you who, who want to continue watching. And uh, let's see how this comes out. Let me move this one. This is really nice. I really like the little bird. This is oil on canvas, it's on stretch canvas. All right, let's do another one. Yeah, try it. Try putting the background last, and and you know, just for, just for, just for gigs, you know, just for kicks, and see, see how it feels. What I like about it is, is you can edit. You know, when you put the background last, you can always edit. It's something that I. I started noticing on works that I really, I really loved, especially the works in, works in the Renaissance. You see a lot of the unfinished works. Um, the subject, the subject or the figurative aspect of the painting, um, is done first, and then, and then the backgrounds. So we're gonna do a little landscape here. I used to love painting outside. I I I, I did uh, my share of plein air painting, and now I'm just painting in the studio. But I used to love painting outside, and you learn a lot because because you're under the clock. You know, you're, the light is moving so fast, and so you learn how to. Uh, one of the best things that I learned in, in painting plein air or outside in the open air is uh, you learn a lot of uh, what is con what is called brush economy, meaning uh, do more with less brush strokes. You end up doing more with less brush strokes and it's because you're under the, under the, the, you're under the clock. Even if you start very early, by two hours later, the, the light is completely different than when you started painting. Usually light, when you start tracking light that way, it starts, it, it, you realize it changes so fast. I mean, Monet talked about the change of light, but I, I, I think that, that uh, it's, it's, it changes even more than what Monet actually talked about.
It moves very, very fast. Just like clouds, no? Clouds are constantly moving. I think light moves in that in that way as well. Very subtle. It almost looks like almost looks like nothing is moving. But if you start looking at it and you start timing it, I used to carry a timer and I used to carry I used to uh, watch and just sit there and, and time not myself but time to change the light the light effects how it was changing and I spent a lot of my younger years I'm still young but a lot of a lot of my uh, teen years measuring the change of light outside and it and it's very beautiful to see that because you realize that there's so much change happening right before your eyes and you can't you can't really you can't really notice it because it's so subtle it's so slow Do you ever put a solid color before you start? Yeah, I, I, I do. From time to time, I'll tint the canvas here and there. Um, I've tried different different things with it, uh, playing with anywhere from uh, earth tones, the traditional earth tones, to to very bright fuchsia, pink, hot pink, you know, uh, colors, just to kind of play around even solid black or solid gray very traditional solid gray i'll be showing i'll be showing you guys some of that so most of uh the way that i like to paint is i like to i like to block colors first and one of the best ways that I like to do that is with a palette knife because it's it's the reward is so inst instantaneous you know? it, you can you almost feel like you're finishing the painting when you just got started and and so it's it's a it's a very quick reward to start using a palette knife and, and block those colors And then I start moving into uh, quote-unquote details. I never really do much detail in my paintings, but they're still, I guess, they're still considered details. The approach that I like to do is, is more of an expressionist, an expressionist way of painting or, or more like post-impressionist type. Leaving details out so that the eye has more breathing space at least that's my that's my little philosophy on it if I give the eye breathing space then maybe maybe there's more to enjoy space is really what makes the painting it's what makes anything in music it's the same thing right it's, it's, space is really what makes the sound Without, without it, there is no, there's no contrast. Without, without the space, we create sounds to to listen to the space. What we're really listening to, and I'm getting a little philosophical here, but what we're listening to is the space. This is the, the sound is helping us realize the contrast. And so I, I apply that in painting. I look for the space. And point it out with with um, with brush strokes. And I'm, I'm I'm trying to point out to the space because it's really what that, that's where the beauty is. Everything else is just interesting. You know, the clever things, interesting things, but really, what we love about our, our anything, I, I believe, it's it's the space of it. Get a little, let's get a little ball bold over here and put some, put some orange right up here. Mm 
and then come back with my palette knife and paint some of that sky and see, see what that looks like. so much fun and it's it's so relaxing especially when you when you start relaxing yourself your mind right it's so relaxing to paint in this way I'm using oils. This is this is uh the oils that I use are actually the the, the Winton oils from, from Winsor and Newton. Well, thank you so much Ricardo, I appreciate that. Yeah, painting with a knife is, is, is um it can be a little tricky because the especially if you're if you're used to brush, um because the tendency is to, to um, the tendency of the of the of the brush painter is to treat the instrument the same way. Uh, we, we want it to we want to be able to use it as as almost a like a brush. But but if you start practicing with it, just kind of making horizontal and vertical lines, you start really getting a sense of what the knife. Um, what the purpose of the knife really is and, and how you can utilize it um, to enrich your paintings. One of the things I like to do is paint as if I'm not painting. In other words, not think about painting. Just do. Do without doing, as some people call it. And just allow the paint, the painting, to come and show itself without much interference from my from my mind. Not not, not trying to. I'm not trying to orchestrate anything. I'm just. A little humble servant of the painting. I'm just in gratitude that it allows me to to participate in here. And so, with that in mind, uh, then nothing is in mind, and, and and so everything is okay because there's no. There's no end goal for me with any of the paintings. There, there is really no end goal. I don't need the painting to look a certain way. I'm fine the way it looks because I'm not in, I'm not emotionally invested in, in what it's supposed to look like. So there's a lot of liberation painting from that area. Do I use water-based oils? I don't. I used to, but I don't anymore. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Sh Shalene. I appreciate that. Yeah, this whole thing is oils. 
uh, Allison says your painting is beautiful. Do you mix your oil with anything? And also, I tried water mix. So, yeah, I have tried them. I mix my oils with Walmart oil. It's the only medium that I use. So there it is, very simple. Very, very, very simple painting. I am offering classes for those of you who would like to learn uh, my method, how I paint. And, uh, and they're so much fun. I'm, I'm, I'm getting started uploading as many classes on my on my platform and it's really cool you get to you get to get all the classes all of my method for a twenty dollar a month subscription so it's it's really cool how's it going fernando hey good to see you here como estas allison says uh okay thank you i've only tried linseed yeah i used to do linseed oil but at some point i started feeling like uh i didn't enjoy the fumes anymore especially because i paint so much so just to just to give you an, uh, an idea of how much I paint uh, I do a lot of painting and so sorry about that so th th there's there's tons of painting in my studio and so the the linseed oil um, cost uh, a, a lot of uh, the fumes cost a lot of uh, irritation in my eyes and I was like I got to stop using this thing but for most people it, there's not really a problem because uh, you know maybe a couple of paintings a day there's nothing wrong with that but but if you're painting uh, like myself if you're if you're doing it full time and maybe you're doing I don't know 10 12 hours a day creating artwork uh, the fumes really started getting to me and, and I didn't want to develop any any uh, uh, respiratory problems or anything like that but I've, I've heard only I've never met an artist who develop anything like that but I've heard it and given the amount of work that I that I do I, I was like no I don't I don't want to go through any of that <laughs> have I ever used sunflower oil I have I have um, the, the times that I tried it I did like it but I thought it was it was too thick um, it, it, even the refined one, I, I felt it was it was a little too thick, um, but for me, right? But I, I think it's I think it's really good too. Some somewhere along the way, I stumble, I stumble on this one, on on artist walnut oil, and once I started doing this, I started using this. It completely changed the way that. I approach my work because it, it made the paint so buttery that I was like, oh man, I'm sticking to this. And so I really enjoyed it. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Jer Jehura. So once again, thank you everybody for, for uh, hanging out with me here while I'm doing a little painting. Uh, I will be showing you more of my work, uh, hopefully, and um, on a daily basis. And if you guys like me to do a set time, uh, maybe once a week, or if I, I mean, I'm a daily type of person, but if, but if you're okay with it once a week or something like that, let me know uh, what hour works best for you guys. I'm in Arizona, so I'm in uh, mountain, mountain time, I guess. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your feedback. If you think that you'd like me to do some, some, uh, painting demos and you would like a specific time that would be awesome something that um, I guess the majority would be would be happy with thank you so much thank you so much Steven is this one going on eBay yeah yeah this small works that I do during the day go on eBay uh, at night I start painting the the works that go on on Etsy cherish and, and commissions and all the other stuff but during the day is when I paint for eBay. So th this, this, this works are going on eBay. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care.
and uh, God bless. Bye-bye.